Where we talk everything wine and that goes with it. I'm Wani, this is Chris and Halia. Today we have Stu Simmons, also known as the seafood connoisseur. Let's just get right into it. What do you have for us today? I have some beautiful caviar and fish roe and pretty excited to show it to you guys. Mm. Nice, and you do everything, right? Like all gourmet seafoods, we're specifically focusing on caviar today. And for me, there's no better pairing in the entire world than caviar with champagne. Does anybody have a favorite champagne? I love champagne. Champagne's my favorite, and mm -hmm. I love. Cool. You? I love Vu. Uh, Dom Perignon. Damn, we need to be friends with Stu, <laughs> for sure. Uh, so all those champagnes have one thing in common. Not only are they great, okay, so that's first and foremost. They're all great champagnes, right? But champagne is not great. They are also all not grower champagnes. So this particular episode, I wanted to focus on the segment that we call grower champagnes. So this guy, Mark Ebrard, started in 1964. The sect of Grower Champagnes is different because they don't have the marketing power. They don't, they're not on the mag magazine ads or featured in rap songs or anything like that. These guys grow their grapes and from grape to bottle, even storing it at their own cellar, they make it. So they're a very like underutilized part in Champagne, but a great one nonetheless. And I got two selections, one Pinot Noir based, one Blanc de Blanc, or Chardonnay based, and we'll see how they pair with the caviars. Ooh. I'm gonna start us off right now. I can't wait. Isn't champagne known as the celebration drink? Oh and yeah. You mentioned that they talk about it in wine, I mean, in rap music, and so that's what <laughs> kind of made it popular, right? Like right. they talk about it in rap songs, and then everybody wants to drink it because a famous rap singer. But every day is a celebration, right? <laughs> You're right? So why are we not drinking champagne every day? Why are we not eating caviar and drinking champagne every day? Very true. Sure. Do you think? that caviar and champagne is a good mix? It's a very good mix, okay. yeah. What do you love about it? Uh, you know, it's a nice uh, blend between the, the uh, contrast of, of the salinity of caviar and then the very refreshing uh, flavor of champagne. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you're in Russia, they, they like vodka. That yeah. is true. True. So that's another good combination. But champagne is so much more decadent. It is. It's decadence and, and on decadence. Absolutely. Let's get right to it. Are you going to, uh, we're going to taste some caviar? He said, Absolutely. excitingly, <laughs> licking his lips. <laughs> so we, we have a lot of different caviars. Uh, caviar is certainly a fascinating uh, uh, product. If Most people know this, but it's fish roe. It's basically the, the eggs of a fish. And the reason why it's called caviar is caviar is actually a Persian word. And, uh, and, it, and it means um, fish roe. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing about caviar is, um, especially in, if you're from like Russia, is caviar should only be uh, called caviar if it's a sturgeon fish. And sturgeon fish are very old prehistoric fish that have been around probably longer than almost any other animal in the world oh. and uh, and so you look at them they, they look kind of like prehistoric look like you know, dinosaurs of the sea and uh, and so uh, officially you should only call the uh, sturgeons caviars so that's sort of like champagne right we're like all champagne is sparkling wine but not all sparkling wine is champagne that's can correct. only come from that region yeah now is caviar so it's sturgeon base supposedly but is it also regional based uh, it, it, it is. In fact, uh, originally, uh, you know, sturgeon was found uh, around the world. In fact, sturgeon was found here in North America. In fact, it was so uh, abundant in North America that they used to give it away free in bars or saloons so people would drink more beer. Oh, well, so since Chris is so excited, so excited. why don't you make him a cracker so and show excited. him how to do it? Yeah, so I, I brought many different caviars here. We'll start off with what I would say one of the more... Um, affordable caviars that, that's great not only for an appetizer and putting on a cracker, but you can use it as a condiment. So let's say you had a fish fillet or you wanted to kind of uh, make your, uh, your scallops or whatever it may be kind of sparkle. Putting a dab of caviar on a fish or scallops uh, really enhances the dish, not only uh, flavor-wise, but also it's quite attractive. Oh, texture too, right? Yeah. So I brought in two uh, of our, uh, what I would call condiment caviars that we can try out. Uh, this one is bowfish. 
And, and the price range for that is, you mentioned 20? Well, the, all, yeah, it, these are probably the most affordable. Okay. So probably in a retail, you, you can get an ounce of these for, for probably $12. Oh, wow. Yeah, so fairly reasonable. Condiment uh, caviar, I like that. Yeah, and, and I brought in uh, two different flavors. This one uh, has a pepper flavor. And this other one is just a normal flavor. They, they're a little kind of earthy. So let me go ahead and make you guys up some crackers here. Oh. So I recommend for these caviars to always put a little bit of sour cream. This All right, is like well, ASMR. we're going to have to take a break. You can start serving up everything when we get back. Chris can taste it and see the final verdict. Ha. But Wine Ann is brought to you by Windows Hawaii and the Honolulu Star Advertiser. See you after the break. Welcome back to Wine Ann, where today we're talking about wine and caviar with Mr. Stu, Ste Stu Simmons. I'm sorry. Oh, I like this. Is it good? I didn't even get to try it yet. All right, go for it. I'll, I'll be the sous chef over here. Okay. Play it go. Cool. Cheers. Look Cheers. Guy. Bon appetit. Cheers. <laughs> look in the eye. Do you know the, the trick? You have to look each other in the eye. Did you know about that? Mm -mm. Oh, you can you can give the spiel. I'm, I'm okay, so wrong. basically, if you don't look the person in the eye, then you get seven years of bad sex. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I've been told. I don't believe it. So pepper, you said. <laughs> this, you and I got the pepper one. I see. Strong. Yeah. But amazing. Yeah, yeah. This was the one that you got? That, the, no, the other one, the one in the red. Oh, okay, so. And it's quite, it has some heat. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So you can see how you would probably more use it as a condiment than, than appetizer, but you could, especially if you like What's your favorite thing to put it on? Um, I think fish. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would say most people put caviar on fish, but you know, you could put it on, um, I think put it on anything really. Right. I mean. I think my favorite combination is caviar with oysters. Oh, yeah, that's a great goodness. combination. Great combination. Yeah. This one, I'm not too sure. Should we good with the wine? Mm -hmm. Very good. So this is a Pinot Noir based wine. So there's like, I like this. Know, yeah. But we, I like the more light, mm -hmm. fruity. I mean, it's so aromatic, right? You don't necessarily think of champagne like, wow, this is so pretty. It smells so pretty. You drink it for the bubbles, mm -hmm. which is why caviar and champagne works with me, because that texture. It's not really eloquent to say, but it's like pop rocks and coca-cola you know like in its lowest form that's something that it does like texture it's like fireworks yeah it's amazing should i open the nobody's nobody's drinking as fast as me i'm gonna open the yeah. second <laughs> bottle you want to get to the next next caviar yeah. okay so the next two caviars that we're going to look at are what i would call mid-range caviars these are actually true sturgeons there are um, but they're sturgeons um that are american type sturgeons. And uh, one is called a, a paddlefish, and the other one is called hackleback. And they actually come from um, Mississippi and Kentucky. Oh, wow. Mississippi for the paddlefish in Kentucky. And uh, they're found wild, but they're also being farm raised now. In fact, you're gonna find most caviar is farm raised. Um, you don't really find too much wild caviar because it's been overfished. Is that the next two right, the next two. Two right cool. here? And the price range is the same for all of these or is it everyone yeah, everyone goes a little bit up oh, okay yeah, yeah so um as i mentioned you it goes all the way up to 800 dollars an ounce that is insane oh. well, then. <laughs> that was a hard pill for, to That's swallow over there <laughs> the second bottle do we have a place to pour it or oh, we're just i guess have we to all finish. have to yeah. finish it off before chris opens the next bottle oh, yeah yeah so Opening a champagne bottle is more dangerous than people think. 24 people a year die from cork related injuries. No. So when we open it, we never want to point it at anybody, right? And we sort of want to like, the sound is like an angel's fart, right? You don't <laughs> Wait, want to pop did you just it. Say an angel's an fart? An angel's fart. Yeah, it kind of sounds like that. <laughs> you don't want to pop it. It's not like, it's not like uh, the stuff you see in movies where you shake it up and like it sprays everywhere. Especially if you're buying a bottle like this, an expensive bottle in the restaurants, right? You want every single ounce. I was hoping that we could just shake it up and just just for this episode, but that's okay. That's for the rap videos. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for the rap videos, of course. Cool. 
So excited to try that one. So, so these are true sturgeon caviar, correct? These are. They're, they're not um, the Caspian Sea or the uh, Black Sea sturgeons or the Siberian sturgeons that you will find. In, uh, the because you exotic. said it's, it's mostly farmed, right? But the, these are farmed sturgeons found in the U.S. They're, they're, um, they're smaller fish, too. And that's why the, the size of the row is based on how big the fish is. Uh -huh. So the biggest fish will have the biggest row. Oh. And, and of all the sturgeons, the largest is the beluga. You probably heard of the beluga caviar. And that's where the eggs are the very largest. And that's the most expensive. Mm. Oh, now that I look at it. And you can see it's different coloring, too. Oh. Yeah. I that more is these. for Chris. Thank you. He's going to take it. OK, so let's be honest. If you're on a date or you're having dinner and you buy some caviar, you're obviously trying to impress somebody, right? Because it's very expensive. Well, we're going to have to hold that thought, right? Ah, OK, we'll get back to it. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. So this show is brought to you by the one and only Windows Hawaii, the Honolulu Star Advertiser. Be right back. Welcome back to Wine and We have Stu Simmons here, seafood connoisseur. So when we took the break, what? please refresh my memory. What were you we talking about? Yeah, well, I was just talking about how if you buy caviar from someone, you're obviously trying to impress that person because it's not the cheapest thing in the world. It's actually very pricey. So can you tell us a little bit about the cost of all of this? I can, you know, and, and caviar can be rather affordable as an appetizer. And of course, it can get very, very expensive. So you could buy an ounce of caviar for probably as low as $12. Mm -hmm. And then you could pay up to $800 per ounce, amazingly so, uh, for the very rarest caviar, which is beluga. Now, beluga is pretty interesting in that uh, it used to be quite abundant, uh, and you got it from the Caspian Sea, primarily from, from the Soviet Union. In fact, that can there is a, a Soviet Union one kilo can of beluga caviar. Wow. And uh, today, if you, if you had that caviar, it would be over $30,000. That is okay. insane. <laughs> Down payment. Yeah. Car. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the reason why it's gotten uh, yeah. so expensive. Why is it so expensive? Uh, is because uh, wild caviar is now illegal to be brought into the United States. Why is that, that it's well, illegal? Well, a couple of reasons. One, uh, it was overfished mainly by, by crime, by, by the Russian syndicate, oh. and, uh, and also pollution of the waters. And, uh, and so uh, the U.S. government and other uh, nations uh, put a ban on the importation of all wild caviar. Now what that did was that forced a lot of entrepreneurs to start up fish farms. Mm -hmm. And now probably 95, maybe even more percent of all the caviar in the world is fished uh, sustainably in fish farms, which is really exciting and really fun. And we're finding caviar coming from all around the world. In fact, uh, in addition to having um, some Russian caviar here that's farm raised, we also have some beautiful caviar from Uruguay well, uh, I also have some California caviar, some white sturgeons. So it's kind of fun that uh, you, you're finding fish farms everywhere. Oh. And they all are doing a little bit different, just like wine. They have different flavor profiles based upon which farm it comes from. So does it also depend where it comes from, the farm, like the color of the caviar? Yeah, why is that cow? pink and that's, so that's gray, that's black, right. that's pink. So different fish eggs. Uh, or fish row will have different colors. So uh, these are salmon. And uh, in, in fact, these are kind of fun, exciting salmon. This is Ikura um, uh, salmon that uh, you often find in sushi bars. Mm -hmm. And this salmon here I brought in, I, I really love this. This is actually smoked. Ooh. It has a smoky flavor. Smell it. Let's take it back. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> that for like, sure. Go, yeah. go. I need this to freshen up your glass, too. Oh, please. <laughs> So tell oh, us a little bit about this champagne that we... So yeah, so we're switching. So we had a Pinot Noir based champagne and now we're drinking a Blanc de Blanc, which is 100% Chardonnay. So you'll see the difference, right? Mm, like it's a little rounder. People say it's like hazelnut and brioche and you can taste the oxidation here. I think with smoky flavors, Pinot Noir works great. But but the thing about Blanc de Blanc is it has that saline quality. Like it's it's salty. Right? Well, like on mineral. that salty note, we'll come back, talk a little bit more about caviar. We're actually going to send it over to Chandra. She is going to do our cocktail of the week. We'll see you guys when we get back. 
Thanks guys. Today for our cocktail of the week, we're going to be making a cocktail called the Tsar. So these are for you, all of you that don't necessarily want to drink vodka straight and you don't maybe like champagne too much. This is a little bit of a marriage of a cocktail, vodka forward of course, but it'll still pair really nicely with caviar. I'm going to use some um, fresh cucumber in this and that's going to just give it a beautiful freshness and that brininess of the caviar is going to pair beautifully with the fresh cucumber. I'm also using a sweet blanc vermouth from France. This is from Chambéry. So we are bringing in a little bit of a wine component with this. I'm going to go ahead and muddle my cucumbers in. It's going to infuse those flavors into the vermouth. And for our vodka, I'm using a very distinctive new vodka from Belvedere. This is um, one of their signature series, and it's used made used um, it's made using diamond rye from Lake Bartizek. So, because I have all spirits in this cocktail, I'm going to go ahead and stir it versus shake it because I do want to add some chill and dilution, but I don't want to over dilute or make it watered down. I want to maintain the integrity of the spirits used in this drink. So we're going to double strain into our coop. And garnish with a beautiful cucumber ribbon. And here we have the SAR. Cheers. Thank you so much, Sandra, for that wonderful cocktail of the week. And we're back. So we were just talking about the smoked salmon, which I'm eating right now. And it is absolutely delicious. What do you think, Chris? I, I love it. I want two flutes side by side so I can drink both to see what I like. Which, do you have a preference on the wines too? Um, the wine I'm having right now is excellent. That's the best answer because what wine is the best wine in the world? The wine that's the in wine your glass, have, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> I know, I can actually smell the smoke. Right? It's strong, From here? yeah, so much flavor. I know, I, there has been a couple of times, I have tried caviar numerous of times. I always say try something once, twice, and if you just can't handle it, you just can't, and it just for some reason. I've tried it in sushi, I've tried it on crackers, I've tried it on the little like pancake. <laughs> it, it looks like a pancake. Yeah, it does. It does, it does. But it does. I oh, just no, for no. some They're called reason. blinis. Well, yes, there yeah. you go. And I'll eat your share, it's all good. Okay, there yeah. you go. Sharing is caring. So to pivot, like, we're obviously in the midst of times that nobody's ever seen before, right? And I, we talked about caviar being for the people, right? $12 an ounce, all the way up to the most expensive stuff. But I'd imagine your biggest clientele, hotels, high-end restaurants. Right, here, the <sighs> restaurant. How are you doing as a local business? To it's pivot? difficult, you know, and, and we've had to pivot. And, and we, uh, I mean, some of my best friends are restaurant owners and hotel owners and so you know, we still want to serve them, but unfortunately, a lot of them are still closed. Mm -hmm. uh, so we pivoted and, and have actually launched a, uh, a web store. Uh, and, uh, and so now we're selling to the public and we actually will deliver to their homes. So that's kind of exciting, yeah. It's super exciting. It's super exciting for me. I know when the next shipment of Kushi oysters are coming in. So right. yeah, it's a, it's a great store. Really. Yeah, we, we bring things in that no one else has. So you're not going to find it at the uh, supermarket or the big box stores. These are really unique gourmet items from all around the world. And that's kind of what we're known for is, is finding products from, from all around the world, be it uh, Russia or South America or Australia, New Zealand, of course, all through Asia and Europe. So, Hokkaido so is scallops. That, Hokkaido is that scallops. what you mean by the 100 C's? I was reading an article and in the article, I'm just gonna read it if that's okay. Um, you had did a little blurb that said, what we're kind of known for is searching the seven seas, or as we like to say, there's actually a hundred seas that we search. Is that what you're kind of That's meaning? exactly oh, okay. what we do, yeah. And, and, and you know, the fascinating thing about seafood is there's thousands and thousands of different species. And this like wine, they all have a little different flavor profile and, and, and different characteristics. And so that's the way we look at seafood. And that's why we carry, you know, a dozen different lobster products or, or different shrimps from around the world. They're not all the same. And, and same with caviar. And, uh, and it makes it really fun and interesting. 
Wow. That's very cool. I know I read that and I was like, what does that mean, 100 Cs? But now I get it. <laughs> I get it. It's very, very interesting. Tasting, I, I get it for sure. Mm -hmm. So do you have a favorite memory or just something that you, every time you drink a certain wine or eat a certain type of caviar or it could be lobster or anything, is there a memory that really ties into there it? There really is. Uh, it was actually Dom Perignon Champagne. Oh. And it was uh, my my wife's uh, birthday, and we were dating, yeah. and uh, yeah, and uh, almost thirty years ago, yeah. and so, so um, yeah, so I had a bottle of Dom Perignon, and and that was just the beginning of our relationship. So, and I served their lobster. So oh, every anniversary you bring out the seafood, the caviar, and then of course. Don't yes. Right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, that is such a sweet thing. That is awesome. What a great memory yes. to savor. Yeah. Is there a reason why you got into seafood in the first place? You know, um, that's that's an interesting story. I graduated from the University of Hawaii, and um, I was in the, I was a surf bum. I was into <laughs> surfing. That's what brought me here, and and uh, and so I uh, I just kind of fell into it. I fell in. I became a, a supplier of uh, lobster fishing equipment. And I, and I started to then buy and sell lobster, and then it just kind of evolved from there. And then uh, before you know it, I'm selling uh, caviar and smoked salmon and, and uh, beautiful scallops from Hokkaido or from Maine, and, and, uh, and it just kind of took off. And then I became very close with a lot of chefs and restaurateurs. And, and uh, um, yeah, and I've, I've, it's a wonderful business, you know, the food service business, the wine business. It's, one of the best. We want to thank you so much, Stu, for joining us on thank this you. show. We had such a good time learning about caviar. I mean, things that we didn't know before. Is there any website that they can find you to purchase? Yes, we're at www.seafood like a minus sign connection.com. Please visit us. Come to our check out our uh, public store. Uh, we have some really neat, interesting products. Yes, and Stu's also going to show more of his caviar, some of his favorites. So if you can check it out, go to our YouTube page and you can see the extended version. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you again to our sponsors, Windows Hawaii and the Honolulu Star Advertiser. Welcome back to Vine and Extended Version on YouTube. Right now we're talking to Stu Simmons of Seafood Connection, and I want to get right back into the caviar, if that's okay with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I don't think I had my fill, and it's the last episode of the day, and yeah, I mean... And let's be honest, it's delicious. It is. I, I'm loving it. <laughs> Especially with the wines. So yes. I'm um, enjoying... Don't worry. I'm still <laughs> yeah? I'm still enjoying. Right on. So this is a local company, obviously. You graduated yes, from is. UH Manoa. 30 plus years, what does it mean, especially now, to have, to be a local business owner in Hawaii? What does that connection mean to you? Well, one, right now, it's super hard, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. for every small business. I mean, we're all really just struggling to, to stay alive. Um, but it means a lot to me. I mean, there, you know, this is my community and, and um, you know, being able to supply these type of products, especially to the public now, it's really important to me, you know, and, and uh, because, uh, I like to think that seafood and, and, and all and wine and, and, and any way that you can um, enhance someone's life by making a special moment really makes a difference. And, and I think, you know, that's kind of our mission is to make people say, wow, with the type of products that we provide. And, uh, and, and so we're always striving to search around the world for the very best and unique products. And bring it to us here. Yeah. I'm saying wow right now. Really. And I'm sure you've had so many moments that have just, you've taken a step back and you just feel so incredibly grateful and it's like a humbling moment. What was that one, whether it was starting your business, really seeing like the ups and downs or having that moment when you're like, yes, I made it. What was that one? Well, I, definitely going through COVID has been very humbling. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably the most humbling experience, you know, I mean, we, uh, you know, we went from, um, you know, very large sales to almost no sales overnight when all the restaurants, hotels are closed down. But I think this, the, um, the people who I've worked with, you know, and, and um, the people who work for me, 
uh, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're the team. They're the ones who make things happen every day. And also the, the customers. I really like people in the, the food industry. I love chefs and, and uh, they have such passion. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's contagious. And that makes it really, really fun. Well, we can tell. So you really can tell. Yeah. Is there any yeah. is there any couple that you want to shout out? You mentioned you have a lot of chef friends, and I'm sure they could use it right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> there's the, the great chefs, you know, and and so I I if I start going through the list, I'd, it would go on and on and on. But uh, every every uh, fine dining restaurant in this town, I'm hoping that locals and, and of course when visitors come back, um, please please go to your local restaurants, you know, because they need all the support they can get. And not only do you support their restaurants, but you support other businesses like mine, mm -hmm. you know, and everyone else who's in, involved in the, the food service industry. So it's really important. Mm -hmm. Now I got three of probably our best caviars. Yes. So we're, we're, we're getting ready to do the, the top of the line. So I have a, um, uh, a white sturgeon from California. Uh, I have a Russian Ocetra. And, and Ocetra is, is considered one of the premier caviars and it's quite unique. And then I have this beautiful, what we call uh, a polanco. It's actually a Siberian sturgeon, but it's farm raised in Uruguay. And it's an excellent flavor. And, and uh, I think it's one of, the, one of our favorites. So let's start off with, uh, well, might as well go with the best sturgeon, uh, yes. uh, Ocetra. See how wow, beautiful the, the colors, colors are? Oh my yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a gold. light brown, oh. yeah. golden. Right. Right, wow. right, they're gorgeous. Darkish, light yeah, green. and also if you notice the size, they're quite large. Ah. So uh, such as one of the larger sturgeons in the world. And uh, this is a very highly prized fish. So let me give that a try. So size. It's just insane looking at the small like glass container and seeing how much is in it and then realizing the price of it. And you're like, wow. Yeah. So size, obviously, size, color, texture, it all matters for price. Size ingredients. matters, yeah. Size, <laughs> Stu, yes, Stu. I'm usually the one doing those things, which is great. <laughs> size absolutely matters. Yeah. So it's not always, <laughs> it's not always the bigger the better, right? Because like you could, like you could, uh, we find that, like say at your local izakaya for not as much money, as something like the Ocetra. Right. right? Right. So it's not always the biggest. It's not always the biggest. But, I need to hear that. But right. But the sturgeon, um, the the bigger the fish, the bigger the, uh, the the fish row will be. So in some sturgeon, in fact, I think the record sturgeon was over 2,000 pounds. So the, was, the fish? Yeah. There was a beluga that was caught in the Caspian Sea. And um, the Ocetras typically are in a couple hundred pounds. So when they, this might be a stupid question. I apologize ahead of time. For example, the Ikura, is there a difference in pricing, say, if you're just to have it out of the glass jar or if you're going to go to, say, like Sushi Eat? Is there a different price range, price difference that the person pays? Or is it the same? There could, the, the, yes, there is. And, and it's also, it's not all created equal. Oh. You know, a lot has to do with how it's being handled and where the fish come from. These are Alaskan. And, and believe it or not, there's a, even a difference in the coloring between Alaskan and like, say, Canadian oh. salmon. And so these have a, a much darker, richer color from Alaska. It also has to do with the caviar maker. He's, he's kind of like a, a wine master in, in how they um, handle and treat the caviar and how they add salt to it. So one of the things people always ask me is, uh, what does um, malasol mean? And, uh, and you can see here, it says malasol on that can, and that means very low salt. So mm -hmm. you just want to add enough salt to the caviar to help preserve it, but not overwhelm it by making it too, too salty. Because the connoisseur is like the fishy flavor, right? It's not, That's right. It's not like a, yeah, a negative yeah. thing. Yeah. I sort of think of it like oak in wine. Like these champagnes do not see any oak. The grapes shine through. Oak, oak is like salt in that sense, right? A right. little bit goes a very long way. It can that's enhance correct. things. Oh, that's interesting. I don't want to upset anybody that I've, like, I've, I've dined out since the whole COVID thing and I've had some great meals, but, and I don't want to upset anybody, but that's literally the best bite of food I've had in like a year. 
I didn't want to interrupt everyone because we're having such a good conversation, but I'm here eating and you guys are talking and I'm trying to hold in my screen because I'm just like, it's this insane. is delicious. And I can definitely, I mean, by comparison from these, you know, it's definitely right. a huge and, difference. And yeah, the, the caviars that we first introduced were uh, definitely appetizer caviars, but also mm -hmm. probably more used as a condiment. Mm -hmm. And these caviars you really want to feature on their own. In fact, you can eat it off a spoon. And, and Probably notice I had a unique spoon here. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, this is mother of pearl, and um, you know the shell, and uh, it's quite beautiful. And the reason why you use mother of pearl and you don't use a, a, a silver spoon is silver has a uh, chemical reaction with caviar and will change the flavor of the caviar. So that's why you either have to do mother of pearl or gold. Hmm. Or if you're really, really rich, I guess maybe a diamond uh, uh, embedded <laughs> they spoon. They make those yeah. things? They have those, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or just like yeah. poi, yeah? You just go like... Right, or you can use your hand. That absolutely. <laughs> or Nothing just take wrong the cracker and just dip yeah. it in. I like the crack yeah. off. I like yeah. the off. <laughs> I actually don't. I like the caviar more than anything. I had no idea that what you use... Wow, yeah. I thought you could just use like a yeah. silver spoon. That's why you never see people using using any type of uh, silverware when they serve caviar. So what's the shelf life on this? Because obviously you talk about the people who make it, treating it with respect, not using so much salt. Like I'm sure this needs to be treated like dairy, right? Like it has to be refrigerated. Like what's Absolutely. The you, so all, all um, you know, proper real caviar, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially sturgeon caviar, uh, must be refrigerated. And the colder you keep it, the better. So in my refrigerator, I keep it at around 30, which is below freezing, wow. but caviar with the salt won't freeze. So mm -hmm. I'm keeping it as cold as possible without freezing the caviar. And, uh, and that will give you the longest shelf life. And I'm sure that's how you treat every single thing that you bring in, because everything you bring in, right, is... It's so important. Temperature is one of the most important things of any, any type of um, animal protein. You want to keep it as cold as possible or freeze it. One or the other. Wani brought up a great point about freezing things. Yeah, just um, for example, if say salmon, you know, of course you can't just get it right off of the boat. You have to freeze it. But say you get it off the boat, put it in your freezer, take it out, don't use it, put it back again, take it out. Every time you put it in a freezer, take it out, thaw it out, does it ruin? You are, you're definitely degrading the salmon. So typically you only should uh, thaw it once. Okay. Um, what you can do, it's kind of interesting, if you have like a frozen fish, is uh, you can take a knife or even a hacksaw and cut it in pieces and then put it in Ziplocs and put it back in your freezer. Oh, that wow. way you don't have to thaw the whole thing out mm -hmm. to, to cut it up and then uh, try to refreeze it. That's what I always recommend. Mm -hmm. And so something like this, like the one ounce portion in the glass, I'm not like, taking a little bit out and having it and then putting it back in the fridge and waiting, right? Like, these, are they meant to be single serve? They are. I mean, of? you probably have maybe three days after you open up a, a, a one ounce container of caviar and you should probably use it. Um, and so they don't go bad instantly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, uh, um, like champagne that you probably wouldn't want to use uh, in a day or two. Uh, but, um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, but caviar, when it's uh, not been open, can last a fairly long time. You, you can, um, these one ounces will, will last 60 days. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't imagine that lasting more than a day if I opened it, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Maybe you go Stupid sure. question. I see people doing like doing the caviar bumps, right? Like taking the caviar and putting it on their hands without anything. Like is that, and then eating it off their, yeah. is that, is that faux pas? Like, is that like holding the bowl or the glass? I was like, like what are you yeah. talking about? No, yeah, like caviar bumps. I've like, we go to these. This. I have not. E I did not. Have you even seen this too, or am I? I'm, I'm just the idiot that talks no, about. No, that no, no, no. I think you can eat caviar any way you like, you know, and especially if if you if you pay for it, you know. Uh, but uh, but yeah, typically, like I said, people do like to eat caviar with with a, a nice spoon. I would take that in an IV. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Stu, for your time and for educating us with caviar. And of course, Chris, your pairings were amazing. This has been an episode of Wine and Caviar. We'd like to say a special thank you again to Windows Hawaii and the Honolulu Star Advertiser, as well as Saks Fifth Avenue International Marketplace for styling us out for today's segment. See you guys later. Wine and I love it.